So, do you like to draw? You should probably learn 3D modeling. So, do you like concept design? You should probably learn 3D modeling. So, do you like classical painting? You should probably learn some 3D modeling. I mean, just maybe you, you should probably give it a try. It could be really useful to what you're doing right now. You know, come on, give it a try. Blender's free. So, while we spend the majority of our time on this channel talking about 3D art for game design, there's a lot of overlap to be had with artists of all disciplines. In fact, I would say that if you're going to be an artist who's in any way involved with digital software, then at some point you should probably learn some Blender. And that's because there are so many ways that learning a little bit of 3D modeling skills can be useful to artists of all different backgrounds. But why learn Blender over other 3D applications? Well, to answer this, I've established a long drawn out technical explanation as to why I think it's free. So yes, while there are other applications that can probably do certain tasks better than Blender can, you might as well start with the free option. One of the major things that stops Blender from being the industry standard currently is the adoption into the strict production guidelines that have been well established for a long time now. But many of the industry adopters of Blender have come from the background of concept artists and pre-visualization artists. And that's because these production pipeline standards are not as strict for the artists in these positions. So let's go over some of the best ways that you can use Blender as a tool for making better 2D art, whether you're a concept artist, an illustrator, or even a comic artist. The biggest and most obvious way to use a 3D program as a 2D artist is when it comes to handling perspective. This is the main overarching reason most 2D artists will learn some 3D art skills or at least it is when you first start. Having a program that can do the grunt work of solving things like perspective, depth, foreshortening, and even simulate a number of camera effects saves a lot of time, and this is super important for any artist that is working in a creative industry. Now, this can be relegated to a very simple and rudimentary use, such as just creating some custom perspective grids at different angles or a compilation of simple volumes. However, this can also extend to much greater creative use as well, such as more complicated digital environments and backgrounds or posed digital mannequins. 2D artists can essentially establish as much of their scene as possible in 3D before taking as many snapshots as they want and taking that into their 2D mediums. But the use for Blender extends past just the ability to easily visualize in 3D. Blender is great for look development, because in addition to being able to view a subject from any number of angles, you can also easily test out any number of lighting setups from realistic to stylized, or even test out different material designs and special effects. You can also create a wide variety of stylized images using a lot of very simple tools that are available in Blender. You can even export line arts rendered on separate layers, which are very useful for comic artists when it comes to creating their backgrounds. All of this can be done in Blender on its own. So as a freely available tool, it's no wonder so many visualization artists have adopted it. However, for a lot of visualization artists, working in 3D has become the norm rather than the addition to their design process. With a lot of artists now focusing most of their time completing 90% of the design in 3D and then the last 10% beauty pass in a dedicated image editor. Blender has a great set of design tools and even some really good add-ons such as hard ops and box cutter which lend themselves to a very fast and iterative workflow. Compared to designing props for video games, there is something to be said about creating a model that only has to look good in render without the strict optimization. Working on concepting in Blender, you'll get a whole lot more use out of things such as the procedural material design, the shader graph editor, the world creation, and things that you might not otherwise be using in the normal game development pipeline. Heck, there's a lot of really cool uses you can get over on the cycles end of Blender with more advanced material pipelines such as being able to use emissive materials to actually light a scene, or things such as micro displacement which can be used for some very interesting effects. Ultimately, I think just about any type of artist can benefit from learning Blender. Use it as much or as little as you please. There are a ton of resources out there. It is easy to learn and with a little creativity, you'll be surprised what you're able to achieve. 
And if you're looking for feedback or you want to challenge your 3D modeling skills, check out my Discord server linked in the description. We've recently started a community challenge section, and while we're going to currently wait on a short break for the holidays, we'll be launching a new challenge theme at the start of the new year. So if you want to jump into that, I'll see you in 22. Otherwise, thanks for watching, like, and subscribe.